Hey everybody, Steve here, and welcome to AFR Under the Hood. Now in this series, instead of giving you just an overview of a game, I'm actually going to play through a full match so you can get a feel of what the game looks like in action. And for my first video, I'm going to be taking a look at History Maker Baseball from Play.com. This was the first game that I reviewed on my channel, and it continues to be my favorite sports game, and actually still my favorite board game overall. This game came out last year, and it kind of took the sports world by storm, in that it doesn't have any numbers on the cards. Instead, all the players have qualities. And during each at-bat, you'll be rolling the dice and checking to see if a player has or doesn't have a certain quality listed, and that's going to give you the result of the ad bat. It also introduced concepts like team chemistry and mood, and even a right now chart where the player's previous at bat could have an effect on his current one. Now, all of these aspects might come into play during one particular game, or they might have no effect at all. And that's part of the charm of playing out a season with this game, and the ebbs and the flows that actually go along with the team as they go on winning streaks and losing streaks. This game begins on the game day chart where certain events will take place that could have an impact on the game and that's where this video is going to start. So join me and let's go under the hood with History Maker Baseball. Okay, so here's what the game is going to look like set up and pretty much all ready to go. Now for this game, I'm using the 2014 Baseball America set with Team 1 and Team 12 from those sets. Now in my baseball universe, Team 1 is the New England Minutemen and Team 12 is the Cape Cod Lobsters. And this is game two of the season. Yesterday, the New England Minutemen opened up with a 8-1 victory. And they're hoping to continue that today. Now, the game actually starts off the field with the game day chart. And the first thing that we do is determine the hot and cold players for each of the teams. Now, yesterday, the Cape Cod team only had three hits all day. Here's their score sheet from the other game. And their one run came on a solo homer from their third baseman, Spain. So we'll designate him as the hot batter. And you can see what I, what I do is I just put an H beside the player's name for their hot and their cold. So I'll do that on today's sheet when we get to it. And for the cold batter, the cleanup hitter, the right fielder Doug Smoles, he went 0 for 4 at the plate with the hat trick of getting three strikeouts. So he'll be the cold Cape Cod player. Now the New England team, they had 11 hits on the day and 8 runs. So there's lots of credit to go around. But it looks like the center fielder, the leadoff man, center fielder Josh Bell, he went two for three at the plate with two walks, three runs, and a stolen base. So we'll have him be the hot player for New England. And the left fielder Mosby, he went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. So he'll be the cold player. So now with those designations in place, will determine the clubhouse mood and the team chemistry. So first, we'll determine for Cape Cod. Now they lost the game yesterday, so we're going to roll a die. And if it's a 1, they would be in dissonance, but they're not. It's higher. So then we move down to this next step, and we're going to roll the decider die. And we'll see, is this Cape Cod ready to win today? The decider die says no, so they're going to be in a semi-dissonant mood. Or, their chemistry will be semi-dissonant. And their mood is going to be stormy. So the mood is going to come into play in this pre-game chart. We're going to actually use 
this side to determine what happens before the game and the chemistry will come into effect in the play chart on the team chemistry chart and we'll see probably a few of these during the game and what the semi dissonant means is they'll roll the decider die and if it comes up with a dot that means they're dissonant and if it has a blank side then they'll just be neutral Alright, so moving over to the clubhouse mood chart, we'll see what happens. So we roll, and we get a 2-6. So that's the media, and 6 is a non-issue. So, a stormy mood, but no bad effects from that. And now we'll do the same thing with the New England team. They won their game yesterday, so we're going to see if they're harmonious from their win streak. And the die is higher, so they're not. And same thing, we'll roll the decider die. Are they ready to keep winning? And the decider die says yes. So they're going to be semi-harmonious. So that'll work the same way on the chemistry chart, and that they'll roll the decider die first. But they get to roll on the sunny clubhouse mood chart, see if something good happens to the team before the game. Okay, so it looks like the manager gets a message from the team trainer. And it's a perk with a starting pitcher. So let's see which starting pitcher it is. We rolled a one. So it's today's starter gets a minor perk. And so we'll go down to this chart. And the minor perk is that he is happy the entire game. So that means that um, anytime a chemistry roll would come up, he would be harmonious, even if the decider die would normally say that the team is neutral at that point. So, a minor perk, and then that only lasts for just today. Alright, so that's all set. Now we'll just fill in the starting lineup, making a note of those pre-game events, and then we'll set up the the umpires for this game we're playing at Signal Health Park and you can see the starting umpires and then you'll notice that the ballpark and the umpires also have qualities that may or may not come into effect during the game and then the other cards that I have off to the side I have them separated out so that in the the dugout spot those are the four bench batters and then the relievers and the starters and then the stack of manager cards and then the same thing on the other side, the home player bench, or the visitor's bench, their bullpen, and their other starting pitchers and manager cards. All right, so that's all for the pre-game. We'll get the lineups filled up and get ready for the first pitch. Okay, welcome to beautiful Signal Health Park for game two of the 2014 Baseball America season between the visiting Cape Cod Lobsters and the New England Minutemen. Let's take a look at the WAFR starting lineups brought to you by Play.com. At second base, leading off for the Cape Cod team is Yang Ishibashi, the rookie. The designated hitter, Reggie Horner. Another rookie at first base, the slugging Alex Imbrogno. Batting cleanup, the right fielder, home run legend Doug Smoles. Doing the catching for Cape Cod is Eddie Machado. In left field is Otis Terrell. In center field is Lamolo King. Third baseman Carlos Spain, who hit a solo home run yesterday for the only run for Cape Cod. And finally, batting ninth is the shortstop, Mike Vesberg. For the home team, New England, leading off is center fielder. Rookie Josh Bell. 
Hometown favorite, second baseman Jim Kemper, back to second. Batting third, left fielder Gary Mosby. Batting cleanup, the designated hitter Edgar Santiago. Batting fifth, playing third base, Doug Rosello. Batting six and playing shortstop, Freddie Geronimo. At first base, Trevor Boston. Batting eighth, the captain of the New England team. And playing a catcher, Dorian Cooper. And finally playing in right field, batting ninth, Roger Willingham. The starting pitcher for Cape Cod is Jonathan Petrie. And tossing on the mound, just about ready to throw the first pitch. Throwing for New England is Darren Wells. Our umpires for today's game, behind the plate, is Chuck McWilliams. Over at first base, Ron Lundy. At second base, Manny Hernandez. And finally, the crew chief over at third base, Eddie McCallum. All right, we're all ready to go here with Ishibashi stepping into the box. Facing Darren Wells. So here's the pitch. And it's going to be a ground out to second base. So just like that, we got one down. Nobody on. Here comes Reggie Horner. Say one five five. Oh. So he is not a home run king, so he flies out to center field. So two quick outs. And here comes the slugging rookie first baseman. Pitch to him. One four five. He is not Wells is in a struggler, so that'll be a ground out. And like he grounds out to the shortstop. So three up, three down for Cape Cod. No score, moving into the bottom of the first. So Petrie toes the mound with the rookie center fielder Josh Bell stepping in, who had a great debut yesterday. It's a one three six. So the pitcher is not an ace, he, but Josh Bell is a whiffer, so he swings at an outside pitch for the first out of the inning. One down, nobody on for Jim Kemper. And so he is not pitching at home. But Kemper is a slugger, so he'll hit a double off the left field wall. And we've got our first hit of the game. That'll bring up Mosby. With one down and a man on second. is fresh so it'll be a line out to second base so now there's two down man still on second base for the designated hitter Santiago righty against a lefty we got a 3-3-3 three, three, three. he is not a utility or a sad sack let's see so it's a triple to deep left field unless he's a home run king and he has the semi-home run king, and the decider die is a dot. So he takes a mistake pitch and launches it into the left field bleachers. And just like that, New England goes up two to nothing. So 
So, while Petrie would like to have that one back, up steps the third baseman, Rossello. And he does have the whiffer quality because the decider die came up a dot. So he's going to strike out. And that'll be the third out of the inning. But not before a two-run Santiago home run. Puts New England up. Two to nothing after one inning. Okay, welcome back to the ballpark here at the top of the second inning. With New England on top, two to nothing, and Doug Small stepping up to the plate. We got a one, two, four roll, and Wells does have the control quality, so he gets Smalls to ground out to short, and we have one down here in the top of the second. Cape Cod still looking for their first base runner. That'll bring up the second year catcher, Eddie Machado. We got a 1 4 6. And Wells does have the flash quality, so he'll get Machado to chase for his first K of the game. And there's two down here in the top of the second. I'll bring up the left fielder Otis Terrell. It's a one four four. And Wells is gonna get his second K of the day. So three up, three down, and Cape Cod still looking for their first base runner of the game. Moving into the bottom of the second inning, Doug Grisello, oh, sorry, Freddie Geronimo is going to lead things off. We got a 4 5 6. So he is not patient. So he'll fly out to center field. And you'll see that the result is in purple. So this is our. First time the next at bat will be resolved on the team chemistry chart. Okay, so with one down, Trevor Boston steps up to the plate. So when we roll on the chemistry chart, we're just gonna roll the two two of the D6s and the decider die. So we get a 1-6, and it's asking if the batting team is dissonant, and they're not, they're semi-harmonious, so we don't even need the decider die. So a distracted, swings at a poor pitch, but otherwise he gets a base on balls. So because the team is feeling good, Boston is able to work a walk. So one down, one on for the... The catcher, Dorian Cooper, and now we'll go back to the, the regular charts. Let's say 2 2 4. So again, he is not pitching at home. Cooper is a slugger, so he'll double into left field. And this is our first chance to look at the, the base runner advancement rules. So when the lead die is a 2. Runners advance two bases on a double. and But an active runner will score from first on a double, but Boston is a semi-stoic. So, so he'll advance the third base. Cooper goes into second with a double. And we've got men on second and third with one down still. I'll bring up the number nine hitter, right fielder Roger Willingham. Oh, it's a three, four, six. So nothing in the pitcher column. He is not eager. 
So it'll be another walk, and we're going back to the chemistry column. So base is loaded with one down, and I think that the Cape Cod manager is going to use his first manager card. So he's going to play this manager influence. So we use experience this at bat instead of the chemistry chart. And as you see, Petrie is a semi icon while Bell is a first year prospect. Now the New England team could counter with a manager card, but they can only play six during the game. So they're going to let that go. So we'll go to the player experience chart. And just like the chemistry chart, we only rolled two six-sided dice and the decider. So, whoop, was a two, three. And that's if it's a prospect pitcher, and he's not. So he gets a ground out to second base. So on a with the lead die of a two, it's a fielder's choice on a ground out, and we're actually going to go up to to this chart up here, and with the bases loaded and lead die of two, it's a fielder's choice, but the runner on third scores. Cape Cod was hoping to get a a ground or a double play, but they do get the runner at second. So now there'll be runners at the corners with two down. All right, so one run in. Oh, and we're going to be back on the regular charts for this at bat. Okay, and the roll is a four, four, six. And Petrie does have the star quality, so he gets Kemper to ground out to second for the third out. But New England is able to put one more run up on the board. So after two innings, it's Cape Cod nothing, New England three. Okay, so moving right on to the top of the third inning. It'll be the seven, eight, and nine batters coming to the plate. And the roll is a two, five, six. So Wells is not a struggler. King doesn't have a champion or the patient. So we're going to go to the infield drama chart for the first time. This is another mini chart. And just like all the mini charts, we roll two D6s and the decider die. So we get a 2-6. And it's asking if the second baseman is gold. And unfortunately, Kemper is not. So it's a solid single into the outfield. And that breaks up the no-hitter. And Cape Cod has their... First base runner of the day. So there'll be a plate round of applause from the from the crowd as Carlos Spain steps up to the plate with a runner on first and nobody down. So the roll is two two three. Wells is not wild. Spain is a utility, so it's a line out to the shortstop, but you'll see that little symbol beside it. And over here, that means that if he also has the whipper quality, that instead of lining out, he strikes out. And we see that Spain is a semi-whiffer. And the decider die says that yes. So, chases a bad pitch. And strikes out. So one down, still a man on first. I'll bring up the shortstop, Mike Vesberg. 
and rolls a four, five, six. And he is not patient, so he's going to fly out to center field. And we'll roll off the chemistry chart for the next at bat. So there are two down, man on first. And we're back to the top of the order with the rookie Ishibashi coming to the plate. So the roll is a 2 3. Okay, so th does the pitching team have harmony? Oh, the decider die unfortunately says no. So it will be a base on balls. So King will move over to second base. And now there's two on, two out for the designated hitter Horner. Cape Cod threatening here in the top of the third. Rolls a three, four, six. Let's see, he is not eager. So it'll be another walk and another roll on the chemistry chart. So some uncharacteristic control problems here for Wells. With the base is juiced. Now uh, I think that I think that New England will play one of their cards. No, oh, no, they're not. They're gonna, they're gonna let it roll. But actually, I think Cape Cod will play one of their cards, and they're gonna improve their their chemistry for this at bat. So they're gonna play this dugout chatter. So they'll be considered neutral instead of dissonant for this at bat. And now that's their, their second card played. Okay, so we're going to roll the dice. It's a 1-3. And again, the decider dot comes up blank. And that's going to hurt New England because it's going to ask, does the pitching team have harmony? And they don't. So instead of a line out, it's a single. And that's going to score two runs. With two down... And the runner's going on contact. So the rookie, Imbrogno, lines a shot into left field and puts two runs on the board. And suddenly it's a one-run game. So two down, two on for Doug Smalls. Say two six six. Oh, and so they're gonna catch him. Brogno leaning over at first, the toss over, and they tag him out. And so an uh, opportunity wasted there. But before that happens, they did get the two runs on the board. And now they trail just three to two, heading into the bottom of the third inning. So Mosby will lead off for the home half of the inning. And you get a three, three, four. And Petrie is a star. So he'll jam Mosby and get him to pop out to first base. So one down for the DH Santiago. And it's a two three five. Petrie is not wild. The batter is not eager. And so he's gonna ground out to second base. The hourglass symbol checks if the batter has the patient quality he would draw a walk, but Santiago does not. So it'll be a ground out to second. And now there's two down, nobody on, for the third baseman, Rosello. 
And it's all ones. The pitcher is not an ace. He, uh, the batter's not a scrapper. Oh, so he deposits another mistake pitch into the left field stand. Back, back, back. That one is not coming back. It's a home run for Rossello. And the wind goes up 4-2. to two. So Petrie pitching a good game except for a couple of mistake pitches. But now there's two down. Nobody on for the shortstop Geronimo. Rolls a 4-4-6. Four, four, Petrie does have the star quality. So he'll recover quickly. Get Geronimo to ground out for the last out of the inning. But New England puts one run on the board. And they lead 4-2 to two going into the fourth inning. And welcome back to the ballpark. We're in the top of the fourth with Cape Cod down 2-4. to four. And so now that we're in the fourth inning, all these, both of the starting pitchers go from a fresh to semi-fresh quality. And we'll see if fatigue starts to be a factor in the game. So uh, with Machado up to bat. Oh, oh sorry. With Smalls up to bat because Brogno got picked off to end the last inning. Okay, so 2 2 5. Wells does have the star quality, so he'll get Smalls to ground out to second. And Smalls is still looking for his. First hit of the season here in the middle of game two. Now that'll bring up Machado with one down. Rolls a 4-4-6. Four, four, and again, Wells gets a ground out to second. So two quick outs. That'll bring up the left fielder, Terrell. And it's triple ones. Okay, so Wells isn't an ace, but Terrell is a scrapper. So he'll double to right. So now there are two down. Man on second. For King. Okay, the roll is a 5-5-6. Five, five, not an ace. He is not a sad sack. So he will double to right field as well. And that'll drive in Terrell. And now Cape Cod is only down by one run. I'll we'll bring up the third baseman Spain, who struck out in his last at bat. That's a one four six, and he is going to strike out in this at bat as well. That'll end the inning. But Cape Cod puts one more run on the board and are down three to four, heading into the bottom of the fourth inning. Petrie is going to face the bottom of the New England order. Boston at the plate. It's a 1-1-2. One, one, and he's going to get Boston to reach for one out of the zone. Gets him to go down swinging one down. Here comes the New England captain. And it's a 2-4-6. He does have the control quality, so he'll get him to ground out right back to the pitcher's mound. So two down, and the number nine hitter, right fielder Willingham. He gets a 3-5-6. Oh, 
so they're not the same. Willingham's a left-handed batter, but he does have the utility quality. The decider die is a dot, and so he'll ground out to short. So three up, three down, no runs, but New England's still on top, four to three. So top of the fifth inning, Cape Cod will send their nine, one, and two batters to the plate. So Vesberg steps in, the roll is four, five, six. Let's see, so he is not patient, so he'll fly out to center field, and we're going to go to the chemistry chart. Or Ishibashi. Let's see what happens here. Rolls a 2 4. The batting team does not have harmony, so he'll fly out to left field. And that'll bring up the DH Horner. He is 0 for 1 with a walk so far today. Rolls a one five six. Let's see, he is not a whiffer. So we're gonna go to the outfield drama chart for the first time today. Okay, so four four. The center fielder is not iron. So he makes a running grab for a dramatic flyout. So that'll be the third out of the inning. And we're going to go to the chemistry chart for the first batter in the bottom of the fifth. Okay, so New England is back at the top of the order. One, two, three. And let's see, so in the chemistry chart, we got three, four. Now this time the batting team does have harmony because the dot came up a yes. So the batter waits for his pitch and smacks a single to the outfield. So it's a leadoff single for Bell. And now Kepper steps up. Nobody out. Man on first. And we get a 1-3-5. Oh, this is the first time. Now, every time we roll a 1-3-5, that means we're going to go to the unusual result chart. And the lead die will tell you which one it is. So in this case, the black die is the 1. So that means we're going to go to the ballpark qualities chart. And if you'll remember on the signal health card, for a left-handed batter, it's normal. And a right-handed batter, it's semi-big. So Kemper's a left-hander. So it'll be a normal chart and the field is grass. So we don't need to roll the decider die, we'll just roll the two. And we get a three five. So it says if it's a big ballpark, it's a long drive, count at the warning track, fly out, but otherwise it's a home run. So it's a he's a left handed batter, so he takes advantage of the short porch in right field and cranks one into the stands for a two run homer. And New England is back on top by three. That ball just seemed to have legs. Carried right into the stands. And Kemper gets his first home run of the season. So after that two-run homer from Kemper, that makes the score six to three. Now when a pitcher gives up their sixth run of the game, they lose any freshness qualities that they had left, and they also gain the struggler quality. So Cape Cod will get a couple different pitchers throwing in the pen. They just need to be up for one batter to be warm. So I'll leave Petrie to face Mosby with nobody out here in the inning. Rolls a three, four, five. And asks if the catcher is iron. 
and he's a semi-iron, and the decider die is a no, so he's not. Mosby does not have a good eye, so he will strike out for the first out of the inning. And now that result is in blue, so we're going to go to the right now chart, unless Cape Cod brings in a relief pitcher. But I think because Santiago didn't get a hit in his last at bat, so it'll be a it would be a hmm. well, it'd be a semi hot against the neutral. Well, no, he's they're gonna they're gonna go to the pen. They don't want to take a chance. So Petrie will be lifted after going just just four and a third, and they'll bring in the. The fireball left-hander Tino Rodriguez. So, anytime a relief pitcher is brought in, or if a pinch hitter is brought in, it cancels any mini chart that you would have been rolling on, and instead you just roll on the main chart. Also, when a reliever is brought in, he gains the ace quality for the first batter that he faces. So. The DH Santiago up to the plate, lefty on lefty. And it's a 2 5 5. So Rodriguez, he doesn't have the star quality. But Santiago, let's see, the decider die is a no. So he doesn't have the home run king quality. So he'll fly out to left field for the second out of the inning. And they're going to leave Rodriguez in to face Rosello with two down. And it's a 2 3 6 with a decider die, yes. Okay, he does not have the double control. And Rosello is eager. Oh, and he's also a woofer, so he's going to strike out. So, no further damage done but the two run homer from. Kemper puts New England up 6-3 to three as we head into the top of the sixth inning. So Wells will face the three, four, and five hitters here in the top of the six. Rolls a 2-3-3. Three, three. He is a star, so he'll get Imbrogno to ground out to short. And there's one down and nobody on for Smoles. It's a one six six. Wells is not a workman. But Smoles is a whiffer. So he'll go down swinging. And now there's two down, nobody on for the catcher Machado. Rolls a 2 4 4. Wells is not an ace. Machado is not a champion. It's a ground out short, but um, he does have the whiffer quality for this at bat, so he will strike out as well. So two K's on the inning. One, two, three, go the lobsters. With the Minutemen still leading six to three, going into the bottom of the six. So now, let's see. Okay, so Cape Cod's going to leave Rodriguez in to face Geronimo. And now this is the second inning of work for Rodriguez, so he will be semi-fresh if that comes up on the chart. And the results say 1, 3, 4. Okay, they do not have a gold catcher. The batter is not a champion, so we're going to go to the outfield drama chart. It's a 3-6. The left fielder is Terrell, and he is not stoic. So that means that he tracks it down, and it's just a fly out to left field. 
So one down, and that will bring up the right-handed batter, Boston. And Cape Cod's going to make another call to the pen. And they're going to bring in Parrot to face Boston. Okay, so a righty on righty. Just filling in the score sheet with. Okay. Okay, so again, Parrot will get the ace quality for the first batter that he faces. Well, it rolls a two, four, five. So no pitcher check. Boston is not a hero, so he pops out to second base. And we're going to go to the experience chart for the next at bat. So two down. And it's the veteran catcher Cooper against Parrot. And oh, and we're going on the experience chart. Okay, let's see. So it is not a prospect pitcher, so he gets Cooper to pop out to the mound for the third out of the inning. Three up, three down, with New England still leading six to three. And so now we're in the seventh inning. And so the starting pitcher, because he's not throwing a shutout, he's lost all of his freshness quality. However, I think they're going to let him stay in, but they will get some action going in the pen. I think we're going to have... We'll get a right-hander and a left-hander tossing in the pen, just in case Wells runs into trouble. So it'll be the six, seven, and eight hitters scheduled to come to bat. So the roll's a four, six, six. Wells is not wild. Terrell is not a home run king or a slugger, so it'll be a single to left. So they get the leadoff hitter aboard. And then we'll get some exchanges between the manager and the pitching coach. And yeah, I think yeah, the manager is gonna come out of the dugout and make the call to the pen. So Wells will get lifted after going six plus innings. We have three runs and one runner still aboard. And the right-hander Corcoran will come in to face the right-hander King. Okay, so here's the pitch. And it's a 1-3-5, so we're going to the unusual results. And this time with the white die one, it means we're going to go to the umpire charts. And we're going to go to the umpire chart with a runner on first base. So now we'll get to see the umpire qualities come into play. So on a one, two, it asks if there's a strict umpire at second base. And Manny Hernandez is not. He is respected, but he's not strict. So, otherwise, the umpire rules the batter safe on a fielder's choice. So it was an infield infield hit. They tried to get the lead runner. And it looks like both, both players are safe. So, they're safe at second, safe at first. And that's a big break for the Cape Cod team. As now they have runners at first and second with nobody down. And Carlos Spain coming up to bat. OK, 
Okay, the roll is a one, two, six. Okay, the pitcher is fresh, so Spain will line out to second base for a very important first out of the inning. So one down, still runners on first and second. For the switch hitting Mike Vesberg. Okay, four five five is the roll. He, the pitcher does not have the flash quality. And the batter does not have the home run king, so he's going to ground out to first base. And on a lead die of four, runners advance on a ground out. So the runners will move up to second and third with two outs. All right, so runners second and third, two outs. The switch hitter at the top of the lineup, Ishibashi. He is still looking for his first hit of the game, and this would be a big one. The roll is 5-5-6. Five, five, and the decider die is a no, which is important because it asks if the pitcher is an ace, and he's not. And the batter is not a sad sack, so he doubles to right field. And that's going to score two runs. So that's going to close the book on Wells. And also make it a one run game. Oh boy. So now Horner steps in with a chance to tie the game. And the roll is a one, four, five. Let's see, he is not a struggler. Oh, so he's going to get him to ground out. I'll say he grounds out to the second baseman for the third out. So the home, the home crowd lets out a sigh of relief. But Cape Cod has fought back, and the score is 6-5, to five, heading into the seventh inning stretch. So bottom of the seventh with the nine, one, and two batters coming up to bat. And Cape Cod's gonna get the left hander Farrell up in the pen. I think. Alright, they'll get uh, they'll get two left handers going. So, Parrot in the second inning of work, facing Willingham, and it's a 2-2-2, two, two, two. and he, let's see, he's not a sad sack, so he's going to double to center field, the three asterisks afterwards ask if the, if the batter was a home run king, he would hit a home run instead, but Willingham's not, so he'll get a leadoff double into center. And we would, let's see, normally we'd be going to the chemistry chart, but I think that Cape Cod is going to go to the pen once again. And they're going to bring in Van Galder and hope that they can get a double play ground out. So that cancels the, the chemistry chart check. So we'll just roll on the regular chart. So it's a one one one. And I ask if there's an if he's an ace. And because this is the first batter he's facing, he is an ace, which is important because that means he grounds out, and when the lead die is one, it's a double play on ground outs. So Van Galder comes in and gets a, oh, he would normally get a double play, but, sorry, Willingham's on second base. So that just means that he holds on the grounder to third. 
And so now there's one down for Jim Kemper. And it's a 155. And no pitching check. Is he home run king? The decider die says yes. So Kemper delivers again. Smacks the ball into the left field stands for another two run homer. And Cape Cod goes, or New England goes back up by three. And the bullpen woes seem to continue for Cape Cod. So that'll bring up Mosby with one down and the base is empty. And it's a three, five, six. And he is the same handiness, so he'll he'll strike out Mosby. Mosby's struggles continue. And with two down, nobody on, Santiago steps up. One six six. Let's see, he's not a workman, not a whiffer. So it's a ground out to third base to end the inning. And we're going to go to the experience chart for the top of the eighth. So at the end of seven, New England scores two more. So they're back on top, eight to five. Okay, and we're back here at the top of the eighth inning with New England leading Cape Cod, eight to five. And the Three, four, and five hitters do up for Cape Cod. Corcoran's going to stay on the mound for his second inning of work. Facing Imbrogno. It rolls one, four, four. Let's see, so he doesn't have the flash, but he doesn't, the batter doesn't have the hero. So a ground out to short, but he has the whiffer symbol, so it'll be a strikeout to lead off the inning. So one down. And Doug Smoles will step up to the plate. He's looking for his first hit of the game. And the roll is 2 4 6. So the pitcher does have the control quality. So Smoles will just hit a weak little grounder to the mound. And we've got two down. For the catcher Machado. Let's see, one, two, four. So it'll be another control check, which he has. So it'll be a ground out to short. So one, two, three, go the lobsters. And after seven and a half innings, New England still leads by three, eight to five. So here in the bottom of the eighth, we've got all right, Rosello is leading off. So they're gonna have Van Galder stay in. He's still their best reliever. Let's say one three six. Oh, so he does not have the ace quality. But, okay, so with the cold check, after the fifth inning, if a batter struck out in his last at bat, which Rosello did, that means that he's, he's, at, he's cold. He has the cold quality for that at bat. So, Rosello strikes out to lead off the inning. One down. For Geronimo. And it's a two, three, five. So the pitcher is not wild, but the batter is eager. Oh, which is a good thing in this case, so he'll jump on a pitch and single through the shortstop. 
So it's a one ounce single for Geronimo. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Boston. And now in the Cape Cod pen, Radshinsky will join Farrell. So they've got a lefty and a righty warming up. So Van Galder with the pitch. 116. He is semi fresh, and the decided eye is a yes, so he'll get another K. So Boston goes down. For the second out, and now it's a man on first with two down for Cooper. And let's see, three, five, six. So they're not the same. And they decided I was a no, so he's not a utility. So it's actually a single down the line. And so that's going to put runners at the corner. with two down. And the number nine hitter Willingham coming up. So a one, two, four. It's a control check and Van Galder actually has double control. So it'll be a ground out to short to get the third out. So no runs. But New England still leads 8 to 5, heading into the top of the ninth. So now, here in the top of the ninth, New England is going to bring in their closer, the left hander Richie Danielson, with the 7, 8, and 9 hitters due to come up to bat. So here's the First pitch, a 1 4 6. Does he have the flash? The decider die says yes. So he'll get a strikeout to start the inning. A 1 down. And that'll bring up King. Okay, so it's a 135, so we're going to the unusual results. And this time we're going to the umpire chart. The base is empty. It's a 3-3. Three, three. This is asking if there is a strict umpire at third. And McCallan is strict. So a hooking liner down the third base line is ruled foul. So there's a break for New England. As a potential double is ruled a foul, so he'll step back into the box. And the roll is three, four, five. The catcher is not iron. King does not have a good eye, so it'll be a strikeout. And we're going to go to the right now chart. And if you'll remember, Spain was the designated hot hitter for the Cape Cod team, so he'll automatically be hot. And since Danielson got a strikeout and his last batter faced, he'll be hot as well. All of those rules are on the, the second board of the game that details how to figure out if a batter is hot or cold. So we don't need to roll the decider die, just 2d6s. And we get an 11. And it is not a cold pitcher. So it'll just be a fly out to shallow right field. And that's going to end the game. So Danielson comes on. Gets three up, three down. And picks up the first save of the season. The final score is Cape Cod 5. And New England 8. Let's go to the post-game wrap-up. Okay, so there's a full game playthrough of History Maker Baseball. And as I said before, this is my favorite tabletop game. I just love this game. 
I love the fictional set, I love creating my own universe, and I love the fact that the players aren't etched in stone with what they're going to bat over a season, that because of the qualities and the way the game plays out, and the variabilities of the chemistry charts, and pre-game charts, and players gaining and losing qualities through the season, the, there's going to be a definite flux in it. And the designer of the game set out that this game, instead of it being a look in the rearview mirror at a baseball season, it's a opening day perspective where anything can happen. And that's great. So I, and I hope that this video has shown really how easy it is to play through, you know, it, this game. Obviously it took a little bit longer to play because I was holding a camera with one hand and trying to keep the score chart and also explaining things. But I can usually get a game in in about 30-35 minutes with full stats. Um, I should note that the score sheet I was using is not the one that originally comes with the game. This is one that was designed by Al Wilson and it's available to download for free on the free stuff tab over at play.com. And I like this one, I just like the layout of it a little bit better and it also has a place where you can keep track of how many strategy cards you've used and I like the placement of the, where the till further notice section is. Um, but the sheet that comes with the game is functional as well. And there's actually even some other game sheets that you can, or score sheets that you can download from the website. So there it is, History Maker Baseball, our first under the hood video. I hope everyone has enjoyed it. Please leave comments or questions below. And we'll look for you next time. We take a game under the hood. See you later, guys.